shall say.
thank God for their driving up to be with their mom on tonight. I appreciate that so much. And all week long, we've had such an awesome service. Pastor Ramona Moore, she just blew the house off and the ministry that she gave us on Thursday night. And then last night, Bishop Allen, men's conference night, shout, hallelujah, shout, the walls will come down, amen. And we thank God for the men's conference and how God blessed them on last night. So tonight, we want to, this is a new, uh, a new era. I'm going to, I want to, I want to talk. I'm, I'm, I don't know how the Lord's going to bring it out. This is a new era. This is the 18th year and the Lord let me know that the last 18 years was closed, closed, and we're now entering into a new era for us, the women united in Christ. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can stop. Thank you. She don't know my language. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But this is a close. A one era. For the last 18 years. And I told them. Father, we thank you tonight and we praise you. We glorify your name. In these very few moments, give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say unto your people on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I told them that this is, eight represents a new beginning. It's 18. So we're starting new. God said, Behold, I do a new thing. So the last 18 years, I said, don't look for God to do. And we do some things the way we used to do it in the last 18 years. Amen. We are creatures of habit. Yes, we are. All right. And sometimes it's hard for us to get out of that mode. Yes. But God is moving swiftly. And we have to move when he moves. Someone said, it's Mandy, Sister Mandy, and congratulations, best wishes to her. And congratulations to Justin. And that, he's been God sent. He's been my most. <laughs> Oh, this week, praise God. Thank Mandy for loaning him to us for just a little while. I was going to tell about well, what happened the other day, but I won't do that. And she called him on the phone and told him about the dryer or something. I won't do that. So, so somebody said, is Mandy dancing tonight? I said, no, she danced Thursday night. So they were so used to her dancing on Saturday night. But we switched up and she danced on Tuesday night, I mean Thursday night. So God is doing things differently. And one of our hindrances that we have is that we like to hold to tradition. The tradition of men. And if we're not careful and we have made idols out of certain traditions. I know in certain places, and usually it's over all, we stand when the scripture is read, Amen. I stand 
But I would rather you do what the word says and keep your seat than stand and disobey what God is saying in his word. I ain't hear much on that. So religion, oh my God, religion, Christianity is not a religion. But it's about relationship. You got into that last night. And you got into the rest of my message on tonight. We're going to look at Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, 18th and 19th verses. Remember ye not. The former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I think last year was preparing for end time harvest. And in order to prepare for end time harvest, we have to make sure that we are first in a position that we can witness to someone else. So therefore, we have to know that we are saved. Oh my God. See, 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 sometimes we get a little bit confused about attending church and having a relationship with the building of going into the church building rather than having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Christianity is not a religion. See, you cannot have, this religion is dead. It's just a lot of do's and don'ts, but there's no transformation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Oh my God. And the old OLD things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Yeah. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look at somebody and say, Are you saved? I can say. I can say. I, I, I don't mean that your name is on the church road. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a new beginning. Now, the last 18 years, y'all done heard the word and heard about Jesus. So you need to have an understanding about some things. Right. Hallelujah. When you ask somebody, you say, yeah, I go to say, no, are you saved? Are you in a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ? Yeah. Are you connected to Jesus Christ? I go to church. Are you connected to Jesus Christ? I pay my dues. Are you connected to Jesus Christ? I pay my tithe. Are you connected to Jesus Christ? I teach Sunday school. Are you connected to Jesus Christ? I'm a pastor. Are you connected? Are you in relationship with a real person and not with a dead thing? But you can't have a relationship with something that's dead. People who have a relationship with inanimate, and what is it? Inanimate? Inanimate, 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 <laughs> objects. There's something wrong with them. You got a relationship with a chair, you got a relationship with a rock. Something is wrong with you. But when your relationship with Jesus Christ, He is alive, He is real. Has He been talking to you today? See, when your relationship with somebody, there is communication. Do you and the Lord communicate? Have you ever asked the Lord, Lord Jesus, save me from my sin? See, we can. Oh my God. See, we're true. One of our themes for this year was going back to the basics. So we're just going to kind of build some things up again to know that I'll see you would be ashamed. That all these years, 
that I haven't told you something about salvation. That's all right. Amen. Amen. So have you asked Jesus to come into your heart and save you from your sins? Well, if you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If I confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that thy God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then are you saved? All right now. And once you become saved, glory to God, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. There's a transformation that takes place. That's all right. Because when we say that we are saved, and just like the preacher said on tonight, we don't do one thing in here and go out of here. See, we don't praise God in here and go outside and cut somebody out. How can a fountain bring forth sweet water and bitter water at the same time? Oh, my God, my God, my God. See, we are watchers over your soul. And we need to check some things out. Because when the praises began to go forth, and you don't feel nothing, you don't sense anything, and you can just sit there, and, 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 and see, Jesus is, and the Holy Ghost is talking to you and whispering sweet things in your ear. You know how it is in a relationship. You all cold and everything. He tried to get something moving. You just. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to tell you tonight that my relationship with Jesus Christ is hot. I'm on fire. Hallelujah. He's the lover of my soul. There is intimacy. Me and Jesus have intimacy. Harvest refers to souls, intimacy, and a relationship brings forth reproduction. Y'all look like y'all y'all didn't have y'all didn't have science one on one or biology one on one. Intimacy in a relationship causes reproduction. So if you don't have any intimacy in your relationship with Jesus Christ, souls are not going to be born. Because it's not all about you telling somebody about Jesus, but it's about you living a life. In fact, him living on the inside of you call their names, but when they are together, you can tell that they are connected, mm -hmm. and you can tell that there's intimacy between them mm -hmm. by the way they respond to one another. Right. You can tell when somebody knows Jesus by what they say. Right. Yes. Jesus, that's Sometimes right. people call him the man upstairs. <laughs> what stairs? <laughs> Yeah. 
He lives on the inside of me. He walks with me. He talks with me. And because he walks with me, Bishop, and he talks with me, hallelujah, there is something that, that, that people see. They see Jesus on the inside of me because we are one. We're one in the spirit and we are connected. And God is saying to us tonight, we need to make sure that we are sane. Because people are looking at our lives that when we profess and when we proclaim that we are saved, then they're looking for reality of serving a true and living God. They're looking for realness. How real are you? See, when you're in religion, it's easy. Somebody said, I'm going to put my religion up on the shelf. <laughs> Then you're not you're not in relationship. Because if you can take your religion and put it up on the shelf and cut somebody out and want to fight somebody, there's something wrong. Because the Holy Ghost on the inside of me will begin to talk on me. Say, shut your mouth. Hallelujah. I know his voice. He said, My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not obey. He lives. Now, let me tell you something. How many got the Spirit of God living on down on the inside of you? <laughs> but you yet got this flesh too. Now, what happens in a relationship in a husband and wife when you stop talking? Uh oh. And you're not necessarily talking, you use another word, communicating. You got problems. Cause, because you going your way, he's going his way, there's no connection there. And see, when we stop talking to God and allow him to talk back to us, the flesh will rise.
got one of them. This is for about. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah. All out. Yes. Yeah. All out. All right. Just believe. 